Cracking rhetorical thoughts, Eddie back at it again with another rhetorical thought. I guess. Um, so how about as a so often seemingly regularly quote, as Philip DeFranco so often regularly says, let's just jump right into this. So today we're going to be talking about a certain character by the name of Hannah Stockings. Now, full disclosure, I'm not a Hannah Stockings fan in any way, shape, or form. So I'm not sure if this is a regular trend or this is just her normal content. The only time I ever really see something by Hannah Stockings is if a channel I watch talks about it, or every now and then, as in the case of today, she'll pop up on trending and I'll be like, hey, let's see what this is all about so I can try to understand what that monolith on YouTube, otherwise known as the trending tab, is, what it represents, and how it works. Because I'm going to be honest, there are days where I look at that tab and I think to myself, what the fuck is going on? But anyway, before I get a little bit too far ahead, let's discuss Hannah Stocking's video. Now before we talk about and watch the little snippets of the video here and there, in a transformative way so that I don't get copyright claimed, let's talk about narrative structure. Now, Hannah Stocking's, as a writer, or her writers, I'm not sure if she writes or if she co-writes or whatever, they're revolutionary when it comes to following narrative structure. So you see, when you watch a when you watch a, a TV show or a movie or almost any any f form of narrative media, it follows what people call the a three act structure, which is essentially your introduction, your conflict or your confrontation, and then your resolution. Take a show like The Simpsons, for example, where you begin in the situation and then through very loose association you find your way to the confrontation or the main plot of the episode, and then eventually you get yourself to the to the resolution of said confrontation. But each single point sort of flows well together and succinct, and even if, as, as, as minute as it may be, there's always a consistent connection. How does Stocking's style of narrative structure, at least in this, um, dare I call it, episode of her YouTube channel? What the fuck? It, I don't know what the fuck it is. It follows a separate one. So it's like you're going down one path, and then rather than link it to the next one, you leap to the next one. And then you go down there, and then you leap to the next one. There's almost no association, and as you'll see as this video goes on, and my sort of closing point, I think, that I've come, as I've watched this video several times, sadly, um, you'll see that it's fucking terrible. It's a fucking cliche sandwich mixed in with a bunch of lazy writing techniques. But what am I, what am I doing talking about it? Let's just watch it and then talk about it. So 20,000 yes. fungal species yes. reproduce Asexually. Yes! You are so ready for your test on Monday! <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so, right off the bat, the video begins with a, well, a really lazy writing technique that you see in a lot of TV shows, movies, and stuff like that, which is when, to establish that a character's funny, what they'll do is they'll have them not so, they won't, they won't write a joke, have them perform a joke, they'll have them just perform the punchline of the joke, and everyone will sort of laugh, establishing that this character is a funny character, or this character has the ability to control and manipulate a room, so it'll be like, ha, that I said, Jonas, get down off the ceiling, ha 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 ha, what a witty anecdote. But Hannah doesn't need to do that, because we all know Hannah is fucking hilarious. Rather, she does this to establish that she's playing a smart character now. She's she's a tutor of, of this, um, handsome handsome protagonist handsome male protagonist one she's tutoring him in whatever on god's green earth he needs to know this answer to this question you know yes you're so prepared for your quiz and yes that is hannah's assumption on what a nerd sounds like she then asks said male protagonist um you know so what are you up to for the rest of the day and he goes oh it's wednesday i'm gonna go check out them cute beds at the car wash more or less so I think that concludes our hourly tutoring session. That'll be $10. Thank you, Morganism. Also, I was wondering what you're doing later. Uh, today is Wednesday, right? Yes. Gotta get my car washed. They have the one car wash with all the hot girls. It's my favorite. Cool, cool. Uh, okay, so I'll see you the same time next week. <laughs> see you next time, Charles. <laughs> um... <clears throat> A little bit of a creep. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Mm. Then Hannah once again turns to another lazy writing technique. Now, there are a lot of shows that do this well, but then 
it's consistent. You know, you watch a show like a movie like Deadpool where he consistently breaks the third wall and he turns and talks to the camera and narrates stuff. Or perhaps something like Saved by the Bell when when old mate Zach Morrison hits into a fucking freeze frame. There you are, Zach. I've been looking all over for I, you. You time out. <laughs> yeah, this is horrible. And then he narrates the situation. But it's a consistent theme throughout every single episode and every single movie or even the comic books, for example, in Deadpool's case. Hannah just randomly turns to the camera and she's like, So, boys like car washes, eh? In conclusion, boys love car washes. Which doesn't happen again, and I'm not sure if this happens in the rest of Hannah's videos, because I haven't watched them and I don't have the time to have better things to do, coming from a guy who watched like 30 hours of Ray William Johnson's podcast, but still, I, I, I do have better things to do than <laughs> review all Hannah's fucking videos, even though I'm doing that right now. So anyway, we go on from there. So then, following this, Hannah then goes on an adventure to find said car wash, because sort of based on her little random monologue previously, she insinuates that she has some sort of crush on this boy. Now, there's a million possible ways you could have done You could have had to just longingly stare at the door as you left the room, but rather they suck with that. But hey, let's not nitpick too much, even though that's what we're doing. Um, she then finds this uh, blonde, protagon blonde female protagonist one, and she uh, holding up a car wash sign, and then Hannah approaches her and says, Hey, are you from the car wash? Duh. <laughs> Are you with the car wash today? Why do you ask? I was hoping to join your organization. We're pretty serious at the car wash. Do you think that you have what it takes? I have the relevant and recreational skills to being a part of the car wash today. That's fantastic. You're going to fit right in. I was worried that someone like me was going to stand out, but I see that we are one and the same. Two kindred spirits. I see two peas in a pod. Come with me. But anyway, what I find really interesting about this is during the conversation with said female, said, said female blonde protagonist, fuck up, can't say that, that's a tongue twister. During said conversation, this girl seems to manipulate back and forth between being the female and being two men. Now, I'm not 100% sure on what this means, but I have watched the trailer to the new Spider-Man movie, and that's all about the multiverse and everything like that, and, and that's all about how, you know, due to everyone doing all these little clicks in... In the Marvel Universe, we're dealing with some sort of multiverse sort of situation where there's rifts and times and space and everything like that and people fusing in and out. So perhaps this may be very well be the slight, the slight little Easter egg. Um, the slight little Easter egg that uh, shows us that Hannah Stockings is actually in the Marvel Universe. Just waiting for the terrible video. Uh, the terrible video by one of those people in the fucking Easter egg community. 10 characters you didn't know were in the Marvel Universe. Number one, Hannah Stockings. I'll apologize about that joke. Um, it seemed funny in my head. I haven't written anything, I'm just sort of freeballing here, so please, uh, please, please forgive me. So following her conversation with the blonde female protagonist, Hannah was then instructed. Uh, Hannah was Hannah was then persuades her to allow her to 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 uh, to to to, uh, to 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 join their to join their uh, organization. <clears throat> at which point, at which point the girl goes, "Sure thing, you're gonna fit right in." And Hannah's you know surprised because Hannah's very surprised because she didn't think that they'd be accepting of people like her. Now. This is a moment where this could this could partition off. So we've established that she has a crush on this guy in the initial situation, but then we're going to dealy off into perhaps you know a story about not judging a book by its cover. You know, Hannah might you know look look very um very clichély nerdy or whatever she's trying to portray in this sort of video, but let her join, give her a chance. She might be all whippersnapper like herself, and it sort of goes down that path for a little bit when she joins. You know, initially. The, lead, the seemingly established leader of the car wash is like, no, we don't want you to join. We don't have time to train you, so come back in a couple of weeks and we'll train you up. No, no, we got a busy date today. I, I, I can't take anybody, but come back in three weeks, okay? But then, but then, you know, one of the girls says, I have time to train you, I'll train you. You know, and it's like, oh, one of these vapid girls is giving time for Hannah. She's not judging the book by its cover. 
beautiful lesson. I am highly qualified and also on a personal romantic expedition. I will not take no for an answer. So what do you say? I'm swamped, I, I, I can't take you. Does anybody have time to train the new girl? Nope, too busy. Sorry, no. I'll do it. Wrong. So after some terrible antics that Hannah has and they sort of do a, give, a, give, a, give a little quick transformation be like, no more khaki pants, no you're wearing Daisy Dukes. What's your name? Morgan Ism and oh. yours. Lisa. You're very prepared. You think so? To wrestle alligators, so I got some Daisy Dukes. You're gonna fit in in no time. I don't really see an issue. Wow. All right, this... Um, and some very... Very jarring attempts at comedy. We sort of it's sort of the slow reveal that um, under this this rough exterior, Hannah is a very pretty girl. And oh my gosh, how did we never see that this caterpillar would turn into a beautiful butterfly? Hey, they need me for handstands. Can you hold this? Oh, sure. uh, it's a hose. What did you expect? I think I'm a little too wet for my shirt. Um, hold on. What are you wearing? This is my fast drying base layer. That is so cute. Why were you wearing a khaki work shirt? My khaki outfit is just there for sun protective properties. I'm just confused. Why are you here? I am pursuing a romantic interest. It's not going too well, but he said he was going to be here watching his car, so I wanted to perhaps impress him. Oh my God, a boy? <gasps> the girls and I are going to get you ready. Really? But first, let's lose that hat. Is that better? Your hair is amazing. Oh my God, why do you even wear that hat? Yeah, what do I do? We gotta take the sunscreen off your face. Is that good? Can I just say on a side note, I'm really fucking sick and tired of this being like a consistent trend in all these fucking videos by people like Hannah and Lele Pons and all this stuff like that, where it's like, look, I think it's fair to say most people would agree, most guys would agree that Hannah Stockings is an attractive female. So she consistently finds it as some, some, some sort of form of entertainment to dress herself up as like an ugly person, an ugly person per se, and then just to reveal that, oh no, look, all along I was a pretty girl, but I'm also relatable because I yell and, and stuff, I'm like, hey, and I pull funny faces, like, huh. It's so fucking masturbatory. Every fucking video, it's like almost like every fucking video is just a prolonged version. I remember that shitty uh, vine that went around where like the f basic bitches and fuckboys would cover their faces in like terrible makeup and bad clothes, and then they'd just be like, and all of a sudden it's like they're pretty it's like go fuck yourself like, you should just I, I can't even form the words it's just it just frustrates me so much this style of like comedy or entertainment where it's like it's not comedy it's not entertaining it's just you fucking just being so fucking masturbatory just being like oh look at me I'm so pretty oh but I'm but it wasn't relatable because I'm just like a nerd it's like no you're just mocking people it's just a fucking cliche and that's what this fucking video is a cli it's just a fucking cliche laid, laid on top of a cliche after a cliche after a cliche it's like you're making a fucking sandwich with a bunch of meat and you just keep layering the meat and meat 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 and then because of all the juices from all the meat all your fucking bread disintegrates and you're just left eating like a fucking wad of wad of meat and, and fucking paper mache like bread and and yeah you claim it's a sandwich but I tell you this ain't no sandwich same as this is not a video it's just a bunch of fucking bullshit cliches that are just Hannah Stockton is trying to say to the board hey look at me I'm pretty but I'm also funny but you're also not funny because your style of comedy is terrible all you do is yell and pull faces yeah but anyway, back to the video. So while she's doing her, while, while during her antics, this random weird douchey sort of guy turns up in his test and is like, hey, wipe my car. And then there's a scene where, near the end, where he's like, new girl, you rock. And it's like, oh, we're going down the same vein where it's like, oh, we're going to learn that these girls who are about to judge Hannah for who she was before she, before they knew who she was and what she could do. It turns out Hannah's the best worker of them all. Who cares about that? All right, your car's done, sir. Oh my gosh, ladies, the Tesla looks incredible. <laughs> New girl, weird one with the hat, you're a keeper. I'll be back next week and every week till the day I die. But instead, it leaps, it just leaps from this and be like, oh, Hannah's boy turns up. And then, so they have this little quick reveal where they're like, Hannah, you gotta remove your sunscreen off your face and everything like that. And, and they remove the sunscreen off her face and all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, Hannah's gorgeous. Wow, who would have guessed? And so as she's doing her sexy walk, Hannah seemingly has to squeeze in a little bit of comedy and she appropriates my fucking injury. Yes, I have a black eye. 
Not fake. Hers, fake. How dare you? Do you know what I went through to get this? I got needed in the fucking head for this. <laughs> That's no lie, that did actually happen. But anyway, Hannah appropriates my injury with terrible shots. Like, and once again, it, it, it shows, like, as I sort of talking, hopping on before about the lazy writing techniques of this video, you look at this fucking video and it's like, she's got a reasonably high budget, she's got these fucking boom operator cameraman, all these girls she's hiding, all this stuff like that, all these places she's she's either she's, she's filming at. How could you not take the time to film someone swinging a gol golf club, fucking flicking some dirt, a fucking skunk spraying you in the face, all these little things. Instead you just use random stock footage which doesn't even make sense. It's like it just entirely breaks us out. Either that or this guy is like one of the world's greatest golf swingers who managed to hit the ball right over the mountain and then also has a powerful set of lungs loud enough to fucking scream at you from there. Why am I nitpicking these small little things? I got no idea and I don't know. I just don't like this video and I decided to tell you all that I don't like it. Oh hey Charles. Morganism? She's killing it right now. Alright. Four! Oh! Oh! I'm good. Shake it off! Oh! Oh my god. I'm good. I'm on my way to Earl's. Oh my god. Is okay? Is that a skunk? Yo, you good? I'm an animal lover, but that's intense! Oh no! Just stay confident! Oh. That smells and tastes horrible! We need to go hover. Oh! Buddy! Can you not see I'm crutching here? Charles. Morganism, are you okay? Hey, yeah. Ouch! Ouch! Oh, I'm fine. But anyway, so the way this video ends eventually is the guy being like, Oh, Morganism. Yes, by the way, her name is Morganism, which... If anyone's name is actually Morganism, I'm sorry, but to me, I've never met someone that name, I'm sorry. <laughs> Morganism isn't a real name. It's just Hannah's idea, I guess, being like, What's a funny name? Morganism. Ha ha ha. This video sucks. <laughs> anyway. So then, cute boy, after seeing Hannah get a black eye, get dirt thrown, get sprayed by a skunk, he's like, I've always liked you. You in, Even when you have your lisp, I like your hair. I like these little stupid, th quirky things about you. What are you doing here? I thought I would partake in the vehicular cleansing operation in order to impress you. To impress me? Yes. Morganism, I've... <laughs> I've always had a crush on you. Really? I love your hair, I love the way you lisp with your retainer, your love of khaki. I've always had a crush on you. Do you want to go out with me? I'd love to. Sweet moment. But here's the thing. What you see in here, to get back to narrative, let's compare this video to something like The Sixth Sense, which I think, in terms of how it plays out, it makes... It's so well done. So spoiler alert if you haven't seen The Sixth Sense, but I don't really care. In the first scene of The Sixth Sense, you see Bruce Willis's character get shot, but you saw, then all of a sudden there's like a, a sudden time leap and it fly, plays forward. And then a lot of scenes play out with the insinuation that he's not there, but it could also just be that people are pissed off at him and people are ignoring him. As it turns out, the guy is dealing with sees dead ch people, not dead children, sees dead people as well, sees dead people, and that's how Bruce Willis is interacting with him. Bruce he hasn't realised that he's dead yet. He's continuing like that. But when you watch it again after having the final reveal, when you realise it. Bruce Willis' character's dead, it all makes sense. Having the final reveal of this to be like the guy who always had a crush on Hannah, it's it's not it's not there. It's just like you just wrote this in for nothing. There was no indication in the first scene, nothing that he said, nothing in the ways he interacted with her that would insinuate that he's into her. In fact, you know, if he actually had a crush on her, he wouldn't be like, you know, you know, the you know, the that car wash all the cute babes, I'm gonna be going there later today to uh check it out. It's like the smoking gun, right? You show the gun, or you show the weapon, early on, to establish that it's there. And then you use it later on with this. She's just like fucking just pulling shit out of nowhere, but... Lord knows what's going on in this video. Um, Lord knows what's going on in this video. What am I doing? I don't know. Bye.